is here for our brother's keeper. And I'd like to just ask, first of all, Ron, can you tell us what our brother's keeper is all about? Okay. Uh, well, first of all, sorry, I was just a little bit late there. I asked uh, Lila, who is our shelter administrator, to uh, give me some fresh numbers. And uh, so she, she contacted me. Um, so a little bit about our brother's keeper. Our brother's keeper was established in 2013. Our brother's keeper uh, continues to uh, house men and women and children who are experiencing homelessness. And so uh, we've been, we've got a pretty busy season so far. And you are open not just during the wicked winter months anymore, right? Our brother's keeper, uh, two years ago, our brother's keeper was a part-time shelter. Uh, we opened at 4 p.m. and we closed at 8 a.m. And everybody had to leave the shelter. They had to try to install and take off. Uh, since then, uh, we've progressed so that this year we'll be open for 12 months and we'll be open 24-7. Uh, so this is this has provided a uh, much better shelter situation for folks who need to stay. And uh, also during times of quarantine, it's provided a safe shelter for those who need to quarantine. So when we talk about our community giving day, one of the things we always emphasize is it's not just financial resources that are necessary. It's the giving of time and talents, and I'm assuming you have plenty of opportunities for people to volunteer. Well, we have, um, we, so now our, ship, our staff is a paid staff. We have uh, a full-time director, Nicole Alexander, and we're really blessed to have her. We've got a full-time shelter administrator. Lila is our full-time shelter administrator. And we have coordinators that um, that we hired and trained because they, they need to have a background. Uh, so we have coordinators that man the shelf for 24 hours a day. Uh, but well, we do need uh, assistance in areas such as uh, we provide hot meals for, uh, for our guests. So cooking those meals and working with our staff to help prepare those meals is, is really uh, a big area. Now is also part of what you do in helping your residents transition into their next phase of life. Yeah, that's one of the things that, that we're really proud of that we've been able to step up on the last uh, year we started. Uh, what we do is, is when people come in and they're experiencing homelessness, uh, we, we talk to them and find out what the situation is and what's keeping them from obtaining a home and where are they at in life. And so we set goals with them from where they need to be, where they want to get to. And we work with them on a regular basis to help to make sure that they achieve those goals and they're progressing towards those goals. So it might be that uh, they need paperwork, they might need social security cards, they might need various forms of ID, uh, they might need to uh, find a job and work with that job for a while until they get enough to eat to go out on their own. But there, there's a variety of circumstances that, that folks are and we try to help progress them so that they're in the other way that we can help them. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? Now, I know like many of the folks that are here manning the tables today, you kind of come out of a little different background, but what's your personal affiliation with the organization? Well, uh, I retired from Fair State University uh, almost three years ago, time flies. Uh, and uh, before I retired, I remember seeing folks leaving the shelter at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning and trudging through the snow. And, and, and it bothered me to see that. Um, we all have a lot of support, family support. We have uh, people who really push for our education and help us in life. And so after I retired, I, I thought this would be a good, uh, good area to pay back a little bit. And, and doesn't that sound familiar to a lot of you, the rest of you out here with your own organizations? That's that's kind of what makes not just 
Big Rapids with the entire Mimosa County area, such a such a wonderful place to live. Yeah, that's true. I, I you know, you go table to table, and sitting at every one of these tables is somebody with uh, a personal background uh, that they want to give back to you know, that particular area. And so, you know, everybody here is a special person. So, uh, I guess as I, as I have said in years past, when we've had comparable events. Uh, it was wonderful to see the community outpouring, to see the crowds come through, but also the opportunity for the individual nonprofits to get to know a little more about each other, the things they share in common, and more importantly, the things they can help with each other. Yeah, and, I, and I'd be remiss to, to not mention, you know, our brother's keeper, and I'm sure a lot of the other organizations, you know, we feel like we're really blessed because uh, we've had a lot of needs you can imagine from the shelter that um, has progressed from being a part-time shelter to a full-time shelter and the needs of people coming in. We've had, we've had a lot of needs and uh, we feel like we've been really blessed with having those needs answered. And uh, the community is, has really done a lot to take ownership of the shelter and to help those folks who are experiencing homelessness in our community. And uh, those folks may not be real visible on the streets, uh, but they're out there. We average uh, close to uh, 30 people at night. And uh, what's really surprised me is the number of children that we have. Uh, last year, we had 30 children and that was working with a partial capacity. Uh, this year, we're, we're, I'm sure we've had at least 15 or so children uh, at the shelter, uh, which is a, not a good place for children to be at. You have to not have a home and have to live in a shelter environment. Um, so we're, we're very blessed and we can all uh, count our blessings uh, this season. Where it is unfortunate to have to be in these kind of situations, but it is a wonderful blessing to have the shelter here. Just Crystal of all time, share with a little bit of us, uh, share your vision for the next couple of years of everything fell in place the way you fight. Where would we go next? Okay, so love to share our dreams. Uh, for those of you who've been in the shelter, you know that uh, despite the best efforts we have, the shelter is a, a very uh, tight facility for the folks who are there. When you put 30, 35 people into a facility that uh, that is not made to be a shelter, uh, it's, it's very challenging to do what you need to do inside a building. Uh, so our next step and, and what we want to start looking at is um, how can we improve the services that we provide to our folks and how can we improve the facility that we have. Uh, and the steps that we take to do that, where it will lead us, I don't really know for sure, but uh, we're looking to provide for the folks uh, who are with us um, a facility that uh, comfortably houses uh, at least 35 to 50 people, uh, uh, an area where we can serve meals, an area where we can uh, work one-on-one -on -one with, with our uh, folks, and uh, an area where there can be some socialization. Uh, just kind of an example, uh, last year we had a couple saying, husband and wife, uh, married probably you know, 40 years or so, uh, they, they found themselves in a homeless situation because of uh, health problems, and, uh, and so they, they lost what they had and ended up at the shelter, and uh, they were at the shelter for probably about three months, and uh, and they need to stay him on one side of the shelter or on the other side of the shelter and uh, a 10 by 10 room where they could they could meet during the day and, and um, share share with each other. So you know, we really really need to be looking at that facility. So we'll be uh, in the next few years we'll be looking at uh, properties, we'll be looking at both, what options are available for us. Well, first and foremost, I want to the way to congratulations on your retirement. Well, thank you. You're involved in the community for all these years. I know it's been appreciated. 
especially now that I uh, the Holy Gate, and I know that you're appreciated there. So thank you, thank Holy Gate for being a part of today. And if anybody has any questions for Ron, uh, this will be pretty easy to find because now you know the voice and you know the face. So uh, thanks for taking the time here to come chat with us. Thank you, Glenn. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you all for being here and for supporting your own organization. Really appreciate that.